Hello, everybody. I'm Ola Dantes, and welcome to The Dwelling Show. Today's segment is called Ola Ola. There's a story, of course. Um, so sometimes when someone asks me my name and I say, my name is Ola Dantes, the first thing they say or want to say um, so, so bad is Ola, like hello in Spanish. And they always have that weird um, Spanish accent. This usually actually happens only in the US, right? So I have to correct them and say it's hola, you know, with that Wakanda accent, <laughs> you know, just to kind of get it right. So I thought for jokes, um, why not just call my update segment on the show hola hola? So basically, hello hola. So which is just going to be a segment where I tell you guys kind of what I've been up to or just talk about a different topic um, from the podcast, from the weekly podcast. So let's jump right into the show. In case you guys were wondering first why this topic of things and experientials and how is this related to real estate? So first, why this topic, right? Well, I was reading Damien Lupo's book um, reinvented life there's a link in the show notes for the curious dual listener out there if you want to check that out and Damien was also a previous guest on the show but he writes in his book about having about how having a big goal strategy focused on things and stuff can actually lead to an unsustainable cycle that never ends and also kind of leads to you know towards misery so this got me thinking like really thinking. Oh yeah. Also, before I forget, there might be some that are thinking, um, Ola, how does this benefit my real estate investing? Oh, that's the purpose of the show. So just keep listening. To kick things off though, um, I did do some research. Um, so let's get into definitions first, right? Let's define things and let's define experientials. So I Googled things <laughs> and it came back with some pretty interesting things. So I passed and I came up with my own definition, um, though it might not be Oxford Dictionary worthy, it will suffice for the purpose here. So here goes, things and stuff, as far as this episode or as far as this content is concerned, are material things with no asset-like attributes, right? And questionable functionality. So I'm going to say that again. Things and stuff, as far as this episode is concerned, are basically material things with no asset-like attributes and questionable functionality. So things um, could be, you know, a, a range, but we'll kind of get into that. So on the other side, though, I Googled um, experiential, right? <laughs> and experiential was way better than the things I found Googling things. So the definition of experiential just simply means involving or based on experience and observation, right? Involving or based on experience and observation. That is the definition of experiential. Of course, I came up with my own definition as well, right? Uh, my definition for experientials are experiences that range from an event that causes a mind shift while allowing our senses to take in new mind cues and letting go of some of the old beliefs to perhaps just having lunch with a whole friend and laughing all the way through together, right? So that's kind of my own definition. Of course, some of us might be thinking, okay, oh my, where's this going? But don't worry, stick with me. I'm thinking the same too. <laughs> Let's break things down a little bit. No pun intended. Things. So with things, you remain in the same similar environment, you know, if you acquire things, right? So for example, if you buy a new pair of shoes or watch, you're still in the same natural setting, at least mentally anyway. Your mind doesn't really go through any sort of transition or any kind of shift like we, we, we mentioned with experiential. For example, have you ever wanted something so much and then you got it and you're like, uh, I'm not really impressed? right? We all have that bias remorse, right? We just feel like, well, I really wanted this car and I got it and it's just like, uh, whatever, right? Alternatively, with experience or kind of with experiential like um, feeling, there isn't that bias remorse, right? Because we're not technically getting or acquiring anything per se, but in return, we're taking in mental cues, right? Which I basically call visual experientials. Now, if you've also ever given money to a beggar on the street, your mind does something. Well, at least you should, if you're human. Um, 
your mind goes through some sort of transition, right? Either you feel sorry for them or some of us might just, you know, say to ourselves, I wonder why they become, you know, beggars or what are they going to do with that money, right? <laughs> That's the classic one. Or on the other side of the spectrum, you travel to another country you've never been to, right? And you go eat or you visit the locals and quickly you realize that they don't actually speak English and you're just trying to order fish and they actually don't know what you're saying, right? Something happens in your mind, whether you are aware of it or not. Um, it happens. And for some, your mind gets confused for a brief moment. Like, wow, like they cannot communicate with me. Like my English language isn't so universal. Right. Or you might just think like, wow, look at this lady and her family. They actually run this small shanty restaurant just for people like me, just for holiday makers. And they're making a living out of it. Right. And then you, some others just feel so grateful. Like, wow. Like I have so much for me back home. Like my life is awesome. Right. Just kind of going away does that to you. Right. So the point is there's a mind shift, which tends not to happen when you're just stationary or just buying stuff and you remain in that same natural um, setting shall I say or maybe it does maybe when you buy stuff and you buy really shiny things it makes you it does something to your mind I would love to hear from you guys um, you can always reach out to me I definitely want to hear that perspective oh, oh, oh another one so this is one of my favorites right why do some actors in Hollywood still go to help people in you know poor and remote places in the world. Like, 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 why do they do that? Why do Angela Jolie bother to help anyone in Africa, right? I mean, these actors and actresses have millions of dollars and Instagram followers and can buy things to their art content, but yet they go start helping people. Like, it almost doesn't make sense, right? So is there a lesson for us in there right? A favorite quote of mine was from Charles Tremendous Jones. And it goes like this. You will be the same person in five years as you are today, except for three factors. One, the people you meet, two, the places you go, and three, the books you read. That's why I love our partnership with Amazon Audible. You can get a free book. But I just want to make sure that we're paying attention here, right? Now, he never mentioned the car you would buy or the new toy you're going to get. He said places, right? Places. And most of us can understand or relate to the fact that if we, if we meet people or read a good book, that can actually really impact our lives, you know, for the good or bad. But I think that second point should not be taken lightly. Like actually really going places could actually change what we become in the future. Oh yeah, this is another good one. Have you ever seen that meme or that post with Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook? And it was basically just a picture of them. And, you know, the word was, what I think it was 138 billion in one post and not Gucci belt in sight. So when I saw that post, I was like, uh, that's kind of interesting. Like, why are these guys not gucci up, right? Why are these guys not flashy? And that really got me thinking, right? And then I saw um, that chapter in Damon's book and I thought this would be really be a good topic for our dual listeners, right? But I want this to be a bi-directional conversation, right? I don't want to just come and talk about it. I actually want to hear from you guys. Email me, go on our Facebook page. Let's have a dialogue, right? So to kind of tie this back to real estate, I want to say that the idea isn't outright to say that things aren't good or that experientials are the way to go. This is not just black and white, right? The idea here is to make us think, like really think of what do we want as real estate entrepreneurs and real estate investors. Is it one? Is it both? Right? And after we figure that out, why do we want that stuff? Why do we want the experientials? Why do we want the things? Or why do we want both, right? Why have we started this journey? And I think that's really good for us because it not only keeps us grounded, but it also just reminds us almost every day why we're doing what we're doing. It's almost like a step back and a helicopter view from the top to really see why am I actually doing this? Where is this car driving to? right? It gives us a good destination 
to have in mind, and it almost helps to predict what we do today. So I'm going to ask for a favor. If you're actually watching this or you're listening to this and you feel like you, you might have a curious friend that likes this kind of content, you know what, just send the show link to them or just hack them below and just basically, you know, share this with them, right? So if you feel like you like things or you like experientials, let me know. And the other thing, if you also want to get a chance to win Damien's book, send me an email at Ola Adwellin with the subject things slash experientials to get a chance to win Damien's book. I'll be definitely, definitely looking forward to hear from you. And just any other kind of um, thoughts that you have, let me know. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Ola Ola. I can't wait to give you guys an update on the next time we talk. Thank you so much.